ABC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership. Hello and welcome to Markets Today. I'm Lata Venkatesh in the Mumbai News Centre and I'm joined by Surabhi Upadhyay from Delhi. It was a good day on the markets. We had positive global cues with uh, the Dow finishing well and uh, the Indian markets had positives in terms of good FII flows over all of last week. Uh, but we didn't make much of them. It was that way arranged and restrained kind of trade with the market having one eye on the results. Hi, Sudhi. Hi, Lata. Yes, and also good that we didn't take off any of the turbulence that one was seeing in the Chinese market. So no neighborhood impact playing out here. Let's quickly run through the top stories. Markets start the week on a positive note on good global queues and FII flows. The Nifty gains half a percent, closing off the 8,500 mark. The sales exports on 140 points. Mid caps, however, lag the frontliners today. Big stocks make big moves. Hindustan Unilever tanked 5% as third quarter volumes grew just 3%. Gale rallied over 3.5% after the company told CNBC TV 18 it won't have to pay subsidy in the second half of this fiscal. Wipro is the top nifty gainer with its good third quarter earnings. A mixed day for mid-cap. SpiceJet puts on about 10% as markets await details of the restructuring plan. Atul Auto gained ground on improving revenues and margins, but m and Financial tanked 7% as bad loans spike to a five-year high. Those were the headlines and here are the experts that we have lined up on the show for you today. Mitri Subramanyam, the CIO of Relegate Investco, will tell us about how he is reading the current market setup. Jeff Lewis of JP Morgan Asset Management Company will give us his take on global markets and we will get you some of the managements of companies that declared their numbers today. All right, so all that opinion coming your way, but first straight away to the day's trading action. It was a positive start to the week on the Lal Street as bulls took control of what was a slightly choppy session in a very narrow band. Anuj Singhal is now here with the day's market highlights. Anuj? Well, strong day for the market or good day for the market, though, you know, if you want to nitpick, you could say that the market could not close above the previous all-time closing high. But all-time closing highs or all-time highs do bring along resistance levels and that's what happened for the market, though the Bank Nifty and CNX mid-cap made another lifetime highs. Uh, uh, one, one more thing which went in for market's favor is the, the way, uh, you know, the crude price has been treated by the government uh, uh, with, with excise duty hike and petrol and diesel price cut as well and some margin being retained by the oil marketing company. So it's win-win for everyone. Fisk is getting fixed. Uh, consumers are getting more ha money in the hand and companies are doing well as well. But let's talk about today's trade. Uh, banks really were at the forefront again. Axis Bank in particular really had a strong day. ICICI and PNB were also in the green. Then you had big gainers like Gale, Wipro, Ambuja Cement, Lupin, BHEL, Bharti. All these stocks did well. On the losing side, really the one that the market was focused on was Hindustan Unilever. The stock had a non-stop rally, had a monster rally, and really the numbers didn't justify any of that, and that's why the stock was down about 5%. HDFC and TCS were other prominent nifty losers, and in the mid-cap space, Suzlon really was your stock of the day. So for now, looks like the market is set for all-time highs, though it may take some doing, and some stocks may have to put their hands up uh, for taking the nifty beyond that line. Thanks a lot for that, Anuj. But don't go away. We'll come back to you for a more detailed analysis of the oil stocks. Uh, well, Hindustan Unilever had uh, some concomitant impact on other FMCG stocks. We saw some money being taken off stocks like Amami and uh, Asian Paints as well. But of course, Hindustan Unilever had a very sharp cut after the numbers. To compensate, some other stocks in, if you can call it the FMCG space, did well. And those were largely the spirited companies. United Spirits and Radico Khaitan had a very good day. And uh, because Gateway District Parks spoke about listing uh, one of its subsidiary or at least there was talk that it might uh, list one of its subsidiary gateway uh, freight, rail freight. Uh, that stock was up and about and its group company, Snowman Logistics, also had a good day. So basically, logistics companies were also in the forefront. But basically, you didn't have too many themes working in the mid-cap space. It was a mixed kind of market. Uh, must point out one more stock, MMFSL. That came in for some very sharp beating, as we told you in the headline. Uh, that's because its bad loan spiked uh, uh, and MMFSL uh, got punished roundly for that. That's a 7% cut on this non-bank finance company. 
All right, let's then move to some market opinion now. V3 Subramaniam of Religiar and Vesco Mutual Fund says that earnings will dictate the market's move going forward. He also adds that corporate earnings growth for the December quarter is likely to be in single digits. You know, I would tend to think that uh, whatever uh, outcomes that you see this year uh, for the market will be more closely related to earnings growth rather than P multiple change, which is very different from last year. If you look at what companies are saying, even as they start talking to us, uh, you know, during the course of this earnings season, I think everybody is continuing to repeat the same message, which is that sentiment has improved, but really activity has not really improved as yet very significantly. Uh, that's also visible in the numbers that you're seeing in terms of corporate earnings growth. Uh, or even in the forecast for corporate earnings growth, uh, the estimate is that for the December quarter, corporate earnings growth was just about in the very low uh, single-digit range. If you look at the consensus, I think it's about 50 to 75 basis points over the course of the year. Uh, you know, I think we're sort of comfortable with that. Uh, the fact that it was cut last week was a surprise, but you know, I think from the way we look at portfolios, uh, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't change our forecast for what we think over the rest of the year. There are clear disinflationary trends which are uh, visible. Uh, the growth pickup is still very nascent, so in a way, uh, that's a good thing from an inflation outlook point of view because producers don't have pricing power at this point of time. But I think the important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the companies that we talk to are already telling us that over the last two or three quarters, they've already seen a 50 to 75 basis point drop in some of their borrowing costs because they've been going to the market and raising money rather than to the bank. So I think in terms of the visibility of lower borrowing costs, uh, that will actually be visible, I think, perhaps even in this March quarter. Uh, and, you know, the market will monitor what the RBI does, but I think the general trajectory is down and that will create, uh, you know, tailwind for for interest rate cyclicals. All right. Uh, and now for all the action from the futures and options space, let's go across to Nigel D'Souza. Nigel. Well, in the derivatives market in today's trading session, the bank Nifty futures saw renewed buying, and that's what really led the Nifty higher. So take a look at it. The Nifty ended higher by close to around 30 points odd, and normally we see that the VIX cools off on the day the Nifty ended higher, but that didn't happen today. So that's indicating maybe there's both out of the money put as well as call buying. But take a look at what happened from the options space today. The 8,000 as well as the 8,100 foot, we saw shedding on both those two strikes, indicating now the base for the Nifty has definitely moved higher. But we saw a fair bit of action at around that 8,300 foot, the 8,400 foot, as well as the 8,500 foot. You made money if you wrote all these three strikes. In fact, the premiums on all of them, they crashed in today's uh, trade itself. The 8,400 call though, that saw some unwinding. So those call buyers, they were unwinding their position, going ahead, and in fact, going and taking a bit of a punt, buying the 8,700 call. The premium was there as well. Jumped closer around 5 rupees from around 29 bucks to around 34 bucks by the time we wound up. While the, at the 8,400 call, those that, were, that had written that particular strike, they got stopped out today. They unwound their positions. Now, take a look at individual stocks that were moving around today. HUL, post those numbers. That one was getting sold into till the final, final minute of trade, while Wipro, from the word go, that one saw buying interest and it continued to see buying interest all through the trading session. Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services post its numbers. That stock got sold into while a few stocks came in for unwinding pressure. The ones that have been running very hard. So Sun TV, Jai Prakash Associates as well as HDI, all of them saw unwinding pressure in today's trade. All right, Nigel, thanks so much for that. So let's take off on that one stock that even Nigel was referring to selling in the FNO space on Lever. Let's talk about why now. Hindustan Unilever posted an 18% rise in profits for the third quarter, but that was only due to exceptional gains coming in from sale of assets. The company has actually struggled in the third quarter when it comes to volume growth, and that number was well short of expectations. We have Pragya Bhardwaj now joining in to break all this down for us. Pragya, I guess they say in the market, if you're sitting on such lofty valuations, there's very little scope for any kind of error, right? So is that what went wrong with Lever? Well, absolutely. There are enough negatives in the results. I'll take you through those first. The volume growth uh, disappointed at just about 3% on a, on a very low base of about 4% last year. That number was disappointing. On all the headline, uh, you know, all the other headline numbers, whether it's the 7.6% total income growth or even an adjusted pad growth of just about 2% this time, on all those parameters, the results were actually quite disappointing. This could be on account of delayed winters, which could have impacted the skin care sales of the company. But, you know, we'll have to see that. But, uh, you know, on the other front, you'll have to say that 
that, you know, it's a very impressive performance which they've laid out as far as the margins this time are concerned. Despite the fact that we saw 27% year-on-year jump in the employee cost, the company has benefited from a gross margin expansion just on account of, you know, few of the other, uh, uh, you know, important inputs like palm oil, LAB, etc. The crude-led uh, uh, benefits are still to come in into the, uh, into the results and still start reflecting into the results. The company has already gone ahead and passed on some of these benefits to the consumers which will help in faster revival of the volume growth as and when it happens. Uh, they also have not cut back on the ad spins as well, which continue to remain at a fairly impressive level as well. Uh, so, you know, all of that translating into a fairly active, uh, uh, you know, promotional and activation front at least. Uh, you know, on its other two key segments, which are soaps and detergents and personal products, 6, six, six to 7 percent revenue growth was definitely a tad bit disappointing. But even in this segment, uh, especially in soaps and detergents segment, they have managed to hold on to their overall margin uh, picture. So, you know, there are enough negatives in the results. There are enough positives in the results as well. We'll have to see, you know, uh, what how long does it take for them uh, to, to, to uh, turn around their overall performance? See, up until now, most of the analysts have factored in the fact that quarter three would not have been a make or break quarter as far as HUL is concerned. But it's the trajectory of revival which everyone has their uh, eyes set on. And whether that comes in about two quarters from now uh, will be key for the market. Listen into the management outlining all of those numbers and laying out the outlook for the future. We have improved our margins, albeit in a modest manner. And very importantly, we have shown agility. Agility in responding to a rapid decline in the commodity price. I'm talking about crude here. And we have taken some decisive actions in correcting a price so that we remain competitive. As far as the markets are concerned, on an overall basis, they still remain very soft. Yeah, if we look at urban, if we look at skin cleansing, if we look at modern trade, if we look at large packs, if we look at popular price segments, the volumes are still negative. Yeah? But there are many other categories and segments where we have seen the volumes move a bit northwards. Price reduction should naturally spur more volumes. Yeah? But at the same time, if you look at certain other segments like personal products, for instance, yeah? we have to, because they are more discretionary in nature, We've still not seen the volumes pick up in any substantive way. Uh, then again, modern trade, urban, the volumes are still negative. So it is still early days. And like we have said, it takes a lag between a change in the con consumer confidence and the pickup in the economy to translate into tangible uh, improvement in the volumes for the FMCG sector. Well, that's when the FMCG space, the oil and gas space didn't do too well. But one guy, one big boy, Gale, was a top gainer in trade today. It rose 3.6%. And that was because the management told this channel, CNBC TV 18, that the company will not have to pay any more subsidies in the current fiscal. Let's hear out more from the management. There is a significant uh, impact of the subsidy on Gale, on which uh, we are continuously engaged with the government, that in the current scenario... Gale should not be asked to bear subsidy burden beyond what we have already done. And we have a, a comfort and assurance from the government that Gale will be kept out of the subsidy mechanism beyond what we have contributed in this financial year. We have already paid 1,000 crore up to second quarter. Third and fourth quarter, we expect that uh, there should not be any additional subsidy. You do not know how the oil prices uh, will behave in future and what will be the future course of policy of the government. Uh, so, therefore, as of now, our expectation is that we will be definitely out of the subsidy mechanism. All right. Well, global queues seem to be quite an important trigger for markets this week, but a lot of events are, of course, lined up. So, let's hear out Jeff Lewis of JP Morgan on his expectations from the Chinese GDP data, which is out tomorrow, and the outcome of the all-important ECB policy meeting this Thursday. Well, I think the GDP data is important in that uh, the markets would be upset if this uh, signs of too rapid a slowdown. I think that's quite unlikely that would be a, 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 a tail risk. Uh, what would also surprise the market if there were signs of a, a pickup in growth. So I think pretty much the consensus is that the Chinese authorities are managing to stabilize GDP growth pretty much in the kind of range that they want to, somewhere between 7 and 7.5%. Seven well, I think we will see a scheme uh, in terms of sovereign QE of 500 billion euros announced. Uh, I don't think it will be quite as aggressive as the market would have liked, but I think it's quite 
likely that it will also be accompanied by a number of measures to make the uh, bank lending side of unconventional monetary policy in the uh, uh, Eurozone more uh, uh, aggressive and that could take the form of extending the maturity to the TLTRO loans. It could uh, take the form of reducing the spread, the cost. All right, so that's an important event we'll watch out for on Thursday when the ECB will announce uh, some form of quantitative easing. It is expected, but as Jeff Lewis says, how it will get translated into cheaper bank lending will also be very closely watched. On that note, let's take a break, but on the other side, Sudarshan Sukhani will join in to study the charts for us and we will get you some stock strategies for tomorrow. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership.